Today we will be talking about pneumonia. Now first moving on to our case scenario. Uh, there is a 56 year old man who developed a productive cough for five days and he presented to, with, to you with a fever and cough and basically the cough is productive with thick and low sputum and the fever is of high grade with maximum recorded temperature of 103 degree Fahrenheit and it was associated with chills and rigor and he, he also complains of the right-sided chest pain um, for last two days and that in intensifies with inspiration. Now the first thing that you do is you uh, think of the differential diagnosis and the, the first thing that comes in your mind is pneumonia, acute bronchitis, acute exacerbation of chronic bronchitis or it could be a heart failure or pulmonary embolism or hypersensitivity pneumonitis or a radiation pneumonitis. And then after taking a proper history, you go for a physical examination. On examining the patient, you found out that his blood pressure was 90 by 60 millimeter of mercury and his apical heart rate was 120 beats per minute and regular and, her, and his respiratory rate was 28 cycle per minute and it was somewhat labored and you measured the temperature and in found, you found out that the temperature was raised and it was 102.6 degree Fahrenheit. Now you do the uh, clinical examination of the respiratory system and on examination you found out that both the lungs are resonant but percussion with one exception that is the right mid anterior and right mid lateral lung fills are dull and on auscultation it shows that the patient has got dominance to vesicular breath sound with presence of bronchial breath sound in the same area that is in the right mid anterior and right mid lateral lung fills and he found out that the least rest of the lung fills are clear now the first thing that you do after this you is you order for a chest radiogram and on chest actually you found out that there is a homogeneous opacity in the right middle lobe and you found out that uh, you told the patient that he has got pneumonia and you treat the patient with antibiotics now moving on to what is a pneumonia. Pneumonia is basically the infection of the lung parenchyma and it can be either segmental or there could be involvement of more than one lobe. And in pneumonia, there is basically the alveoli is affected and the alveoli is filled with the WBC, RBC and fibrin, which leads to the increased weight of the lungs and hence there will be the replacement of lung spongeness by the consolidation. Now moving on to the clinical definition of pneumonia. A patient is said to have pneumonia when there is constellation of symptoms and signs in combination of with at least one opacity in chest x-ray. That means to say a patient who has got uh, shortness of breath, fever and all the respiratory symptoms uh, to have pneumonia, you must order a patient to have a chest radiogram and there must be a consolidation which can be either homogeneous or non-homogeneous. Now moving on to the classification of pneumonia. Historically, pneumonia is divided into four types. First being the community acquired pneumonia. Next is the hospital acquired pneumonia. And the third one being the ventilator associated pneumonia. And the fourth one being the pneumonia in immunocompromised patient. However, recently, a new fourth category has been uh, introduced and that is healthcare associated pneumonia. And now moving on to the pathophysiology, how does a pneumonia occur? Typically, pneumonia means the proliferation of microbial pathogens at the alveolar level, and hence the host responds to this pathogen. Usually, uh, when a patient sleep, when a person sleep, there is a small volume of microaspiration, and there is a gross aspiration in the patient who has got lip, uh, decreased level of the consciousness. And however, uh, there are various uh, mechanisms uh, that deals with the microorganism that goes uh, into our respiratory system. However, then can, there can be very few cases of hematogenous spread uh, from the distant sites, uh, as in case of tricuspid endocarditis. And, uh, Proliferation of the pneumonia uh, can be pneumonia, microorganism causing the pneumonia can be also from the direct local spread. However, it is very rare and the spread can be from the pleura and the medicinal uh, space. Usually when we take a, take a break, uh, there are various uh, mechanical factors uh, that leads to the 
capture of the large in health uh, particles like there are hairs and turbines at the nearest at the level of the nose that captures the large in health particles and you know that the uh, tracheobronchial tree tracheobronchial tree is uh, branched and there is this branching structure leads to the uh, easy catching of the microbes if uh, any of the microbes enters to your respiratory system and there is even in the tracheobronchial tree you can find out there is mucociliary action which leads to the clearance of clearance and cleaning of the micro microbes and especially there is gag and cough uh, reflex which is very essential so that there will be the effective clearance and the killing of the microorganism if that include that enters into your respiratory uh, system and you should know that when uh, when all these uh, barriers are overcome and the microbes are very small, then it can reach to alveoli. And in alveoli, even there is a defense mechanism. That is, there is alveolar macrophages that comes into action for the killing and the clearance of the uh, pathogens. And you should know that macrophages are assisted by proteins that are produced by the alveolar epithelial cells, that is, uh, surfactant proteins A and D, and that have intrinsic opsonizing properties or antibacterial or antiviral activity. And hence, you should know. Uh, you should know that uh, there will be a host uh, inflammatory response uh, in response to the microorganism in the alveoli. And you should know that it is the host inflammatory response that causes all the clinical syndrome of pneumonia, rather than the proliferation of microorganism itself. So, what happens uh, when there is uh, the activation of the host inflammatory system? There will be the release of inflammatory mediators such as interleukin-1 and tumor necrosis factors which results in fever and there is a uh, release of the chemokine sons such as interleukin-8 and granulocyte colonist stimulating factor which stimulate the uh, release of the neutrophils and their attraction to the lungs which produce both the peripheral leukocytosis which leads to the increase uh, complete to blood blood count and there will be also increased purulent secretion so the patient will present with you to with a uh, cough with a uh, sputum production which would be mucoid and alloys and even maybe associate with streaks of blood and the patient will say that the patient has got fever due to the release of interleukin interleukin 1 6 and tumor necrosis factor and these uh, inflammatory uh, mediators even leads to the uh, release of the micro uh, leads to the requirement of the neutrophils which creates the alveolar capillary leak and you can know that from the leak the erythrocytes can cross it and there may leads to the consequent hemoptysis and you should know that this uh, capillary leak subsequently results in the radiographic infiltrates and rails uh, detectable on auscultation and even this leads to the uh, hypoxemia as the alveolar alveoli will be filled with WBCs, RBCs and there will be no year. And if the uh, when there is hypo, there will be impaired gas actions in the alveolar level, leading to the hypoxia, and which leads to the uh, activation of the various chemoreceptor in the body, which uh, which tells the respiratory center that the body has hypoxia and the body need to uh, breathe more, and this leads to hypoventilation, and which finally leads to respiratory alkalosis, and this leads to dyspnea and in you know, all know that in a structural level in the alveoli there will be alveoli will be filled with all the exotates rvcs and all the wbcs and there will be no year so this leads to reduction in lung volumes and compliance and finally the patient will have go, will go into respiratory failure and even death and now moving on to the pathology what happens in the alveoli there will be there is four phases phases usually in pneumonia the first being the edema there will be presence of a proteinaceous exudate and often of the bacteria bacteria in the alveoli and the next next uh, phase is rate hepatization phase in which there will be erythrocytes in the cellular intraalveolar exudate with neutrophil influx and the third phase will be gray hepatization in which there will be erythrocytes uh, and the erythrocytes will be lysed and degraded and there will be neutrophil and fibrin deposition and there will be a successful containment of the infection and improvement in the gas exchange, hence leading to the fourth or the final phase that is resolution in which there will be the macrophage reappearance as the dominant cell. This was all the overall pathophysiology and pathology of the pneumonia. Now moving on to the uh, types of pneumonia. First, we'll be discussing about the community-acquired pneumonia. Community-acquired pneumonia is a uh, 
can be present uh, due to various uh, etiology and it could be a bacterial pneumonia or a fungal pneumonia virus it could be due to virus or a protozoa however the most common microbial that cause the community acquired pneumonia is a uh, is a bacteria and among them the most common being the streptococcus pneumonia and in the hospitalized patient who are in ICU it could it uh, is mostly due to streptococcus pneumonia or the staphylococcus aureus or a typical organism like Lesionella or other respiratory virus or in uh, non-ICU patient the most common cause being the same streptococcus pneumonia and the other uh, mycoplasma pneumonia or chlamydia pneumonia however you should know you, you should people should know that the panda, uh, on this uh, pandemic present in the earth, it is uh, pneumonia is mostly due to the coronavirus. It is a type of metanumovirus and it also is responsible, uh, coronavirus is also uh, responsible for various other uh, or the pneumonia like severe acute respiratory syndrome and middle east respiratory syndromes and you know people all know about the COVID-19 and the community quiet strains of MRSA. Now moving on to the uh, various epidemiological factors that suggest the possible cause of the community acquired pneumonia. You should know, find out uh, the most possible cause of the pathogen causing the pneumonia so that it will be easy for us to guide in the treatment to use the empirical antibiotics. For the patient who have got the use of history of alcohol abuse, it could be due to streptococcus pneumonia or other oral anaerobics or Klebsiella pneumonia. And a patient who has got COPD or has history of smoking the most common organism that causes pneumonia is the hemophilus influenzae. Similar in the patient who has got a structural lung disease like bronchiectasis, it could be a, a, a various gram-positive or gram-negative organism like Staphylococcus aureus or Pseudomonas aeruginosa. In the patient who has got demonsia, stroke, or who has got decreased level of consciousness, of course, there will be the history of the gross aspiration because of the decreased gag reflex, which may lead to uh, all the uh, oral anaerobic uh, into the uh, alveoli causing the anaerobic um, pneumonia or in patient who has got lo long abscess it could be due to the community quiet uh, uh, MRSA or if the patient has got the history of the travel to some uh, certain area like if the patient has traveled to southwestern United States it could be due to Hanta virus or if the patient has got history of recent travel to southeast Asia it could be a Brucolderia pseudomalai so you should take the proper history it could if the patient has got history of exposure to bats or birds it could be due to uh, due to the organism possible pathogen maybe H. capsulatum. So you should take a proper history about the travel, recent travels, uh, the food habits, uh, the previous diseases, and the, even the exposure to in any uh, particulars, um, particular birds or any particular rabbit or sheep or even cat. Now moving on to the clinical manifestation. A patient who has got pneumonia may present with the various manifestation. It could be a indolent uh, to a fulminant form in the presentation. The patient may have got mild, severe, severe pneumonia to fatal pneumonia and the presentation can be either typical or atypical. In typical pneumonia, as I've already told you, patient usually uh, presents with sudden onset fever, which is usually high grade associated with chills and rigors and which is associated with cough, with perlent sputum and even with the breathlessness or pleuritic chest pain or the patient may even have hemoptysis. However, in cases of atypical uh, pneumonia, there is usually a gradual onset of dry cough, there will be shortness of breath and there will be usually prominent extra pulmonary symptoms rather than the pulmonary symptoms and the patient usually say that they are uh, they have got a headache myalgia fatigue diarrhea vomiting or sore throat and you even and after that if you order a chest x-ray you could find out that there will be minimal pulmonary signs with abnormal chest x-ray now moving on and in such patient if uh, do you if you do a clinical examination you could find out there will be various respiratory system examination finding like in examination you can see that there will be diminished moment of the site uh, on the site of consolidation there you can see uh, the apical impulse and there will be no fullness or flattening of the chest wall and there will be no no intercostal suction but you can see the patient may have got the use of the accessory muscle and on palpation, you could uh, see there can be a restricted moment. The trachea and apical bit are usually normal. However, you can find out the vocal formators and uh, 
friction for meters can be increased and when you do the percussion on the involved area you may find out there will be a dullness and on auscultation you can see uh, find out a bronchial breath sound or you can find out there will be increased vocal resonance or bronchophony phony egophony or pleural love or crepitation now uh, you a uh, patient presents with you to you with all the clinical features of pneumonia and you suspect the patient to have pneumonia now you are, what investigation you all are going to do is the first thing as i've already discussed is the chest radiogram and in chest radiogram you will find out the either it is a uh, consolidation that is uh, either it is a homogeneous or non-homogeneous opacity usually with present with your bronchogram and if you could see there are some pneumatocil then it usually suggests that the infection may might be due to the staphylococcus aureus and Chest X-ray hygienist or opacity usually develops after 12 to 18 hours of the onset of the illness. And uh, we you, we've usually do chest X-ray for the diagnosis of pneumonia. Also, for we do chest X-ray also for the detection of the complication of the pneumonia, which we'll be uh, discussing later. And chest X-ray can be normal in patient who has got immunocompromised. Uh, compromise the state and you should you people should all know that uh, the resolution uh, of the pneumonia and the chest x-ray usually may take up to six weeks so there is no uh, necessary or need to repeat the chest x-ray early without any other indication just to look out if there is any resolution or not. Uh, although the treatment of the pneumonia is empirical, uh, you should uh, find out the etiology of the pneumonia. And the etiology can be of helpful in the patient who has got very severe disease, who are in ICU, or in the uh, or in the patient who which pneumonia is non-resolving. And for etiological diagnosis, uh, the test that you do is the gram staining and the culture of the sputum. The next thing that you can do is that you can send for the blood culture. However, only 5 to, you should know that only 5 to 14% uh, of the culture of the blood from the patient uh, hospitalized with uh, pneumonia are positive. And the frequently isolated pathogen is a streptococcus pneumonia. And uh, this uh, culture can should not, must not be done in every patient. However, uh, in the patient who has got a high risk patient like neutropenia, secondary to pneumonia, or in the patient who has got a splenia or the complement deficiency, or the patient has got chronic liver disease or severe community acquired pneumonia, then you should always order a blood culture. And the other uh, test that can uh, be used uh, so that we can do the etiological diagnosis of pneumonia includes the urinary antigen test. And it is there are two commercially available test uh, kits uh, and th that are used to uh, determine the pneumococcal and lesionella antigen and in the urine. And the next test uh, so that uh, we can determine the etiology is the polymerized ch chain reaction. And it's, uh, it's amplify a microorganism DNA or RNA. And uh, it's also shows how, how much pathogens are present in the body. And uh, PCR is uh, generally done from the narrow pharyngeal swab. And for example, like in the case of coronavirus, uh, we do a PCR uh, test to defer the diagnosis. And even uh, PCR can detect the nucleic acid of the lesionella and mycobacterium pneumonia. pneumonia. And the next test that we can do is a serological examination. And in that, a fourfold rise in a specific IgM antibody title between acute and convalescent uh, phase serum sample is generally considered diagnostic of intervention with the pathogen in question. And uh, the other various uh, things that we can look uh, for the patient in who has got pneumonia are the biomarkers. And there are mostly two important biomarkers, and which include C-reactive protein and the procalcitonin. Uh, however, you should keep it in the back of the head that uh, it, uh, biomarkers are not used uh, for the diagnostic purpose, but for the pro prognostic purpose. That is, if the patient, uh, we can do a serial monitoring of the uh, CRP and procalcitonin to look uh, if the patient is improving or not and even CRP can be used uh, uh, to identify if it is a bacterial or a viral pneumonia and also to determine the need of the antibacterial anti therapy or deciding when to discontinue the treatment. The next test that we can do is the computed tomogram and it is done to rule out uh, the differential and also to look for the extent of the disease. Uh, now we should know that in a patient, what are the risk factors that leads to early deterioration in the 
uh, community acquired pneumonia and this risk factors include the multi level inf lower infiltrates or if patient has got a severe hypoxemia or the patient has got severe acidosis or the, there is a multi uh, there is mental confusion or the patient has got te shiver tachypnea hypoalbuminemia then you should or uh, thrombocytopenia or hyponatremia or hypoglycemia you should know that the patient uh, may go into already deterioration and you should you need to do a starter empirical treatment as early as patient Uh, as early as possible and even you may need to hospitalize the patient so now moving on to the treatment how do you treat a patient who has got a uh, pneumonia as i've told you told you it's usually a empirical treatment but however before starting a treatment of a patient with pneumonia you should uh, determine whether the patient will have a outpatient treatment or the patient will have inpatient treatment or patient will be should be needs to be admitted in the icu as uh, pneumonia is a cause of mortality in both extremities of is and it has got very high mortality you should and it is a very common disease you should be always cautious on what to be how to start a treatment and way to start a treatment and for this to make this easy there is two scoring system and the first being the curve 65 scoring system in which there are uh, five category that is uh, you look for if the symptom of the patient if the patient has confusion or if their urea by uh, bond ratio is more than 19 or if the respiratory rate is 30 or more or if the systolic blood pressure is less than 90 and the diastolic blood pressure is 60 or less than 60 and the age is uh, more than uh, 65 or more than 65 all the different points are given the number 1 and you should uh, calculate the total score so that uh, you can decide where to treat the patient if there is a score is of 0 or 1 then you can treat the patient as a out care basis that is with the oral antibiotics and if the score is of 2 then you should uh, find uh, you should weigh yourself if you want to do a inpatient uh, treatment or you want to do a observational admission and if the score is 3 or more than 3 uh, you should always treat the patient uh, in hospital and you should even consider icu admission if the score is more 4 or 5 even this score give uh, you to you to look for the risk of mortality or the percentage of mortality in the patient with pneumonia and the next uh, index that can be used is or the next uh, scoring system that can be used is a pneumonia severity index and it consists of the various uh, various uh, factors like characteristic like the whether of the either it uh, it is a male female or it is a is or where if the patient has got comorbidities like uh, cardiac failure or liver disease or neoplastic disease and you even do exam you include a examination finding like the respiratory rate um, blood pressure temperature and even the investigation finding like the arterial uh, ph or urea sodium glucose and you do the overall uh, A totaling of the score and again uh, the scoring is classified as a uh, class 1 to 5 and the one being the with point 0 where you can do outpatient management with a mortality of 0.1% and class 5 uh, in which uh, you have to do a uh, inpatient man management uh, with the points more than 130 and the mortality being 29.2% that is also considered as a high risk patient now we were moving on to the treatment you should uh, look for the uh, certain thing in the history like uh, to uh, to so you should find out if there is any risk factor for the pathogen so uh, which got which could uh, lead to the resistance to the usual therapy for community acquired pneumonia you should ask the, if there is a history of hospitalization for two or more days in the previous 90 days or if there is use of any antibiotics in the previous 90 days or if there is any uh, immunosuppression states or the patient is on acid gastric acid sub patient drugs or the patient has got other chronic uh, illness like the patient is on hemodialysis or the patient has got copd or the patient has got uh, uh, other things like the neutropenia or gross hemoptysis or if there is any cavitatory infiltrates or necrosis this all leads to the uh, guiding of the use of the antibiotics and uh, so that uh, use of the antibiotic uh, by determining the possible microorganism that is uh, we should find out if there is a risk for pseudomonas or aeruginosa or any risk for other mrsc now moving on to the empirical antibiotic treatment uh, in the patient uh, who has uh, we who will be treated on the outpatient basis basis you should uh, look if the patient is previously healthy or not and if there is no any patient is healthy and if there is no any use of antibiotics in the past treatment then you'll start the patient with a macrolid uh, that is you'll, you'll either use a clarithromycin or azithromycin or uh, you will treat the patient with the 
doxycycline. But however, if the patient has comorbidities or has a history of use of antibiotics in the past three months, then you should select the alternative from the different uh, class. That is, you can either use a respiratory fluoroquinolones, that is moxifloxacin, gemifloxacin, or a levofloxacin, or you can even use a beta lactam. And usually the preferred beta lactam is the amoxicillin that is of high dose, or you can even give amoxicillin clavulin it, or uh, ceftriaxone or cefopodoxim or cefuroxim plus a macrolide. And now you uh, do a CARF-65 uh, scoring or you do a, a pneumonia severity scoring in a patient and you found out that the patient needs to be admitted in the hospital. Uh, for that, in, the, in such cases, the empirical treatment will be different. And if the admission is done uh, outside the ICU, then you must uh, treat the patient with a respiratory fluoroquinolones and a metalactam, which could be either ciptriaxone, amoxicillin, cefotaxim, or etapenem, plus a macrolide. And if you uh, treat the patient in the ICU, then you should give the patient a beta lactam, uh, which could be either ceftriaxone or ampicillin plus uh, sulvactam or uh, cifotaxim plus either uh, azithromycin or uh, fluoroquinolones. With this, you should uh, see if the patient needs a special consideration, if the, like, uh, the, if the patient has got high risk of pseudomonas. If the patient has got high risk of pseudomonas, you should always include an anti-pseudomonal beta lactam like a uh, piperacillin or tazobactam or cipifine or imipenum or meropenum, plus either ciprofloxacin or levofloxacin. And in case, uh, or you, even you can give uh, beta lactam plus an aminoglycoside, which can be either amikacin or dobramycin plus azithromycin. And if you suspect a patient having community acquired MRSA with insulin resistant staph aureus, then you should always consider adding uh, linezolate or uh, vancomycin plus clin. And if you are giving vancomycin, then you should give vancomycin with clindamycin plus clindamycin. This was about the antibiotic regimen. And you should always uh, know that it's not only about the antibiotic in the treatment of the pneumonia. Even you should think of the supportive treatment. And the supportive treatment includes oxygen supply in the patient who are hypoxic. If the uh, arterial blood, uh, blood oxygen saturation is uh, less than 90, you should always give patient the oxygen uh, support. And even after the oxygen support, if the patient uh, is hypoxic uh, or the patient is hyperventilating, the patient may need a mechanical ventilatory support. And even in the patient who are presented with the septic shock, that is the blood pressure is very low, there is the rule of steroids. And if the patient has got pleuritic chest pain, then you must uh, give patient analgesic and opiates. And even if the patient is uh, a patient has got, uh, who can't uh, produce enough uh, cough, uh, then you can do uh, assisted coughing. And you should know that a uh, rate of the chest X resolution in pneumonia depends upon the ease of the patient and underlying lung disease. So in patients who are non-smoker who, who are of less than 50 years of age and there is no previous lung disease, complete resolution in this can be seen in the chest X-ray in about six weeks. And in the patient who are a smoker who are more than 50 years, who has got previous structural lung disease or any other disease, then the resolution will may take up to 12 weeks. Now, if it takes such a long time to uh, see the radiological improvement of the chest X-ray, now up to when to admit the patient in the hospital or the question arises when to discharge the patient. We can discharge the patient if the patient is conscious and when you do the examination, you found out that there is a patient of febrile, that is the oral temperature is below 37 degrees Celsius or the respiratory rate is below 24 or the heart rate is below 100 or there is normal oxygen and there is normal oxygen saturation in the room here and the patient uh, is uh, clinically well and the patient has can eat and drink by himself or herself and can maintain a normal hydration, then you can think of discharging the patient. But however, you started, uh, you admitted the patient or you on that outpatient patient, you give the patient the uh, empirical treatment and the patient, there can be a failure to improve. The patient may not improve. And what to do if there is failure to improvement in the pneumonia or the symptoms of the pneumonia, then you should reconsider diagnosis. Or it could be a non-infectious condition mimicking pneumonia, or it could be either a long carcin. You should think if the patient has got long cancer, or it could be a case of pulmonary thromboembolism, or it could be a collagen vascular disease with long involvement. You should, uh, in the back of the head, you should think of the other differential diagnosis, or it could be a new case of pneumonia, but you may be treating a wrong pathogen, or it could be a right pathogen with wrong drug. 
or there will be some, there can be some other uh, factors like there can be mechanical obstruction or there could be an obstructed bronchus by cancer. That is, a patient may have got cancer and the, uh, the uh, cancerous mass lesion lead, uh, leading to the obstruction of the bronchus uh, leading to the pneumonia, or it could be an untrained metastatic biogenic focus. So now moving on to the complication of the community quad pneumonia. What are the what can be the complication? There can be a various complication, and the pulmonary complication includes delayed or incomplete resolution spread to the other lobe, or a long abscess or a suppurative pneumonia, or pulmonary embolism, or a retention of sputum causing lower collapse. And the pleural complication include paranemonic effusion, empyema, spontaneous pneumothorax, and and in case of uh, cardiovascular system, the complication may be acute uh, circulatory failure, myocardial infarction, arrhythmia, acute pericarditis, or, or uh, myocarditis, and the other uh, system, uh, complication includes uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome, renal failure, hepatitis, multi-organ failure, ectopic abscess formation, and meningoencephalitis. Even the patient may develop drug-induced drug pyrexia. And now moving on to the uh, empyema. Empyema is a complication, can be a complication of pneumonia, and it is a uh, empyema means a grossly purulent pleural effusion. And the most of the common causes includes, uh, as I've told you, uh, bacterial pneumonia, or it can be due to the long abscess or bronchiectasis. And microscopically, neutrophil uh, leukocytes are present in the large number. And there is uh, so, when to suspect if the patient has got empyema? If the uh, patient has got community quad pneumonia and there is persistent or recurrence of pyrexia, uh, even in the continuous, at, even with the continuous administration of the suitable antibiotics, then you should always think the patient may have developed empyema. And how do you manage the case of empyema? The management is uh, done by the tube thoracostomy with antibiotics. That is, intervention is needed if the patient develops empyema. And now, how to prevent a case of a patient from a pneumonia? Uh, there are various methods, and the one of the method is the use of the vaccination. A patient can be a patient who are vulnerable, who has got a structural lung disease or their lung disease, who are immunocompromised. We can prevent suspicion with the deployment of the uh, streptococcus uh, pneumonia by using the pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine, which is a pneumonia vaccine or protein conjugate uh, pneumococcal vaccine. And even you can give a patient with influenza vaccine so that uh, the patient will be less developed, uh, le pneumonia less frequently. That's all for today. Thank you.